Whether these two sides are still the best in the country, there is little doubt. In this vanguard competition, they still lead the way in what they do both on and off the field. But only one club can leave Franklin's Gardens a winner. Will it be back-to-back -back titles for the women in black? Or can the famous quarter jersey of Quinns overturn last year's result and lift their first Tyrrells trophy? Let's take a look at the lineup. Saracens defend their title with nine players that featured in last year's final. Just one change of the 15 that knocked out Wasps in the semi. Lauren Newman comes into the back row for Chrissy Siskova, who's playing for the RAF against the Army today. With England stars Bryony Cleal, Vicky Fleetwood and Marley Packer all out with injury, Poppy Cleal and Jody Retty will bear the ball-carrying responsibility. 19-year-old tight hair prop Hannah Bottom has 10 tries for Saris this season. It's an all-international back line with Red Roses Player of the Year nominee Sarah McKenna at fullback. Zoe Harrison plays outside Georgie Gulliver. Gigi, as she's known, has announced she'll be retiring after the match. The captain is Lottie Clapp. Seven of the Quinns run on side started last year's final. Shauna Brown misses out with a hamstring tear, which brings about something of a reshuffle in the forward pack. Fee Fletcher comes in at blindside. Aussie international Chloe Butler plays seven. Number eight, Jade, Jade Conkle scored two tries in a player of the match performance against Loughborough in the semi. The back line is unchanged. 18-year-old Ellie Green starts her second Tyrrells final at fly half. Loads of experience either side of her in Leanne Riley and the talismanic captain Rachel Burford. And genuine X-factor out wide. Former elite gymnast Heather Cowell has 20 tries in the Tyrrells this season. Jess Breach has scored 20 tries in just seven test matches for England. To the replacements, young England Sevens international Chantelle Meal has been awarded with a place on the Saracens bench. Nina Visterson started at fullback in last year's showpiece. For Quinn's Irish prop, Leah Lyons is back from injury just in time for the big day. Zoe Sainer started last year's final as well. So the stage is set here at Franklin's Gardens. This is the second edition of the Tyrrells Premier 15's finale, Saracens defending their title, Harlequins looking to go one better. And here they come. Saracens will be led out again by Lottie Clapp, who captained them, lifted the trophy last season. There she is on the right. And Rachel Burford, Harlequins captain. And alongside today, expert comments from a star of English women's rugby, nine years with the Red Roses, including a World Cup triumph in 2014. It's a very good afternoon to a former Premiership winner with Worcester, Cat Merchant. Good afternoon. I'm absolutely buzzing for this. You can see when the team's running out, it's going to be such a good game. From Quinns, we can expect them to be going wide with their expansive style of play. And then from Saracens, they're going to look to bully. They're going to look to be confrontational and to really take it on as that pack. Yeah, they know each other so well, these two. One win apiece against each other in round 14. Saracens got the better of Harlequins. That extraordinary comeback, three tries in five minutes. But Harlequins, a three-point win for them in October. Something's got to give. There's Georgie Gulliver. Announced her retirement this week. What a career she has had. What a story it would be, Kat if Saracens could do it for Georgie Gulliver. Yeah, I think if there was any extra, um, any extra motivation needed, it would be to do it for George. Um, she's just such a credit to, the, to, the, to her, to the team. Like They all respect her so much, and she's such a quality player as well. George Selwood, your referee. The TMO is David Rose, Nikki O'Donnell, and Laura okay, Pessingale. Line, then, a running touch. <laughs> a London derby in the East Midlands to decide the champion of England. Saracens running left to right, all in black, and they forced the error early on. And here's one of the bright young things of English rugby, Hannah Bottoman, with her first carry. Sarah McKenna, cut out ball to Sydney Gregson. So many internationals on show today. Here's another one, Zoe Harrison, big tackle. Coming in on her. Poppy Cleal at number eight for Saracens today. 26 years of age, 29 test matches. L. Perry. Here's McKenna again, another early touch for her. Brilliant 
in England's Grand Slam run in the Six Nations, nominated for the Player of the Year award. Young Rosie Gallagher now. Gulliver to Cleal once more, quick hands to the second receiver. Let go now, Quinn, let go. So an efficient start from the Saracens women. Cleal decides to go to the short side to Bottoman, try scorer in last year's final. Cleal picks and goes herself. Here's May Campbell, the hooker, the shortest player in the Saracen side, but she certainly packs a punch. Zoe Harrison being knocked down by deliberate knock on. Rachel Burford. It's deliberate. You've got to be careful doing that these days. It'll be a penalty to Saracens. Frantic start, Cap. Yeah, really frantic start. You've got great carries. People like uh, Cleo just carry him really hard, and she's just so difficult to tackle. I think Burford was unlucky there. I think she got great line speed, was trying to stop uh, what was going on, and just just got a hand caught in there, but I don't think she please meant that. Please. And the kicking game of Zoe Harrison. Already showing what she can do. Finds touch. And this Saracens team are one of the best catch and drive outfits in the business. So Harlequins are going to have to be on Who's guard here. Okay. May Campbell to throw to the lineup. Lauren Newman, one of the changes of this Saracens team today. Wins it at the front. Jody Retti, Found in Scottish legal. international, tri scorer last week. It's it's legal. Got her hands on that one, but Drop as Abby back, Scott, the Red Roses star, interfered with this drive, is Bottoman. Hannah Bottoman, one meter out. Saracens looking for their He's first the try. Saracens over the line, they have their score. And guess who? It's Poppy Cleal. And her extraordinary try scoring run in the Tyrrells Premier 15s continues. I think they just showed exactly how clinical uh, they can be there. That starts with Zoe Harrison's kick. That's not an easy kick to get it exactly five metres out, so they're in the perfect position for their line out. We know uh, from form that they are really good at doing the driven line out. Abby Scott, I actually felt, did really well to get in there and disrupt. Um, but they managed to carry here. Hannah Bottomham's getting close to that line. She does ball presentation, and then Poppy Cleal knows exactly what she's doing here. But it's so important her teammates leech onto her and push her over that, because Poppy, even though she's strong, she can't do it on her own. So one either side to drive her through, get her over that line so she can get that ball down for the try. Great team effort there. Zoe Harrison. Tries to fade that one back inside the post. It'll just slide by the left hand up, right back out. That was such an efficient start from Saracens. From the moment Zoe Harrison kicks off in this final, they've dominated so far. Yeah, it was like it was a training park move that they knew, right, we kicked to the corner, we have the line out and we score off it. And they played that confidently that they knew they were going to score it, and they did. Back underway, Harlequins kick, kick to the far side. El Perry. Young 21 year old Lucia Prop takes the ball from the kickoff. And Saracens go about their work once more. Good counter wrap. Coming in from Quinns and they won the penalty. And that'll settle their nerves. They needed possession in this game. And that was good work at the breakdown from the Quinns back yeah. row. And it's clever play as well. I think when you hit breakdowns, you pressure the opposition and you make them put numbers in and then obviously you can uh, win it as well so it's worthwhile throwing at yep. least one player in Another especially when so many teams ice the breakdown and they leave people out seven so great decision to come in here disrupt she clears two players she's so strong she's gone low cleared them both and then uh, won her team the ball line out slightly over the front over the head of abby scott and it's just been knocked on by leanne riley so harlequin's line out which would be a strength of their game with the likes of Abby Scott involved. Just malfunctioning early on here. And in games like this where it is going to be so close, every line out, every scrum is so important just because it means possession and they need to have that there. Crouch. Hugely important part of the game. There's Vicky Cornbrook on the loose head side. Set. 46 caps for England up against young teenager Hannah Bottom and already Cornbrook gets the shove on, but... How about that from Poppy Cleal, being aware of the situation, scoops it up, sets up a breakdown. Back in. Gulliver Holding back to Harrison. Thank you. And she 
finds touch. Was she inside her 22? No, she wasn't. That was passed back, of course, by the scrum half. So they'll go back for the lineup. And that's one of those moments Just where, me. you know, if that bounces in, you On say that's a great tactical starters. kick, but going straight out, obviously, Come and now Quinson right back, and Quinn's will get another go at it. So it's a great pass from George Gulliver back into her, but yeah, it's been Welcome carried back place, in, please. therefore she Six, kicks it out. Uh, and it's you. Quinn's line out back where she kicked it from. Line out again, overthrown. Savinia Catlin unable to find her jumper, Abby Scott. Jody Retti. Carries it again for Saracens. Here's Bottoman once more. Gulliver goes the same way. Harrison through the hands of Cattell. McKenna allows it to bounce on to Gregson. Sydney Gregson actually spent some time playing in Sydney for Sydney University. Harrison cut out ball to Perry. Here come the women in black once more. Newman now. Important tackle on the far no side from Heather Cowell, but Newman stole another couple of metres. Harrison again to Cleal, short ball to Perry. L. Perry heading for the try line. Sarri's looking for their second. Harrison, a long pass might do it to Gregson. Quinn's defence holds firm for now. Harrison again, McKenna. There goes uh, uh, Jess Breach coming off the wing to make the tackle on that occasion. Here's Cleal again. Always takes at least two defenders to bring her down. What a start this has been from Saracens. Bottoman with another carry. Tackle! The champion's dominant right now. Poppy Cleal ominously reappears at the back of this breakdown. Use it! Use it! Out, out! Referee says use it. Release Harry. will pick and go. Poppy Cleal Push back, it on please. Push back. Pick and go again from Saracen, so they have another score. Held up, says referee George Selwood. We'll set a scrum. How good were those phases of play in there? That was just excellent. They're line breaking, uh, bursting through. So here they're looking to just get that ball wide and it's that offload there, which is key. Poppy Hill could have carried that. Instead, she passes it. Then Rosie passes it on as well. And Newman, she's quick. But the second row out there um, playing flanker today makes the line break fantastic. Perry I'll in here, she's scanning, okay. looking the whole way, gets punching yeah. into him. Great yeah. clinical Crops. play. Bind. So can Set. the Harlequins pack try and get the initiative here on their own line. Cleal has it off the base, making the tackle is Fee Fletcher, importantly for Harlequins. Gulliver to Harrison, shooting out of the line was Riley. Harrison steps inside. She's not Quinn's on the ball. Looking for the She's turnover. on the body. Gulliver, offload, Cleal, Bottoman, out to Gregson. What a score from Saracens. Oh, the power up front. But this young front row coming up with some lovely touches for Saracens, and they have their second. Again, the vision and the ability to just have your front row players passing those uh, balls on. And Sydney Gregson, she's a good finisher. She's strong, she's got good footwork, and then, um, yeah, she just sees that line. Look at it here, great hands, twist and turn. You've got Bottoman, your tight head prop, passing the ball out wide. Sydney changes ball into the right hand, gets into that corner, into there. So lovely kind of linking play. And you could just see they're playing with confidence. They believe they're going to score. So they, they're not scared of throwing that extra pass. Still just 21 years of age, makes a very good contact from out wide, but it'll just fall short. We've got to ask the question, Cap. What can Quinns do here to get back into this game under the pump right now? Well, firstly, they need to be able to keep their set piece. So the, the line outs, they've lost two opportunities in, in try scoring areas, really, on the 22. Um, so I think they've got to tighten that up possibly go for easier options up at the front just to keep that ball, and they've got to get line speed on these girls.
Early Green gets us back underway. And Al Perry takes the restart. Offload over the top from her in the lead up to that try. Great hands from Bottoman as well. Finished off by Sydney. Hold Gregson. it front, please. Harris. Such Thank a you. big boot. Here's the Harlequins fullback, Emily Scott. 28 caps for England. Well wrapped up by Sonia Green. Yeah, don't go in there. Out seven, thank you. Heather Cowell comes in to help out at the breakdown, the right winger. Chloe Butler with the carry there. Originally named in second row today. There was a, a late withdrawal. The USA Eagles player, Christine Summer, dropping out of the squad earlier today. Here's Leanne Riley, incumbent starting England scrum half. Burford, quick hands, up to the halfway line. Here's Jade Conkle, 30 carries and 17 the tackles ball along the two tries in the semi-final. Lost now, thank you. So Riley, surveys her option, works the short side. Shooting out of the line was Lottie Clatt, the Saris captain, to make that tackle. Quick hands from Conkle to Davinia Catlin. Burford. Thinks about the pass, the call, but decides to hold on. Good line speed from Saracens, keeping Harlequins in their own half is Vicky Cornbra. Once again. Green to Scott. Scott the offload to Kamara. The front sevens play. Beaten. Jess Breach helps out at that breakdown. I see these Saracens players flying in, trying to slow this Harlequins ball down. Green again taken out by Poppy Cleal. All the experience of Poppy Cleal on the young 18-year-old, and there's the turnover penalty. I think oh, no. Saracens are really clever with what they do. They slow their ball down. They just get all over it. Retty in particular, she's lying on the ball. Uh, she's making sure that Quinns don't have quick ball out there. Bottoman was in there fighting over the ball, trying to get the turn, uh, turnover or the holding on penalty. And then uh, Poppy here in really yeah. nice and quick to uh, just challenge for that possession. There was no the attack, all players is on the ground. Attacking line out for Saracens. Harlequins have had those two line outs in Saracens territory. Both of them overthrown, handing possession back, and you can ill afford to do that. How about that for a start? 25 tries and 25 previous appearances in the Tyrrells for Poppy Cleal. It's quite extraordinary the amount of time she gets over the try line. May Campbell. A good take from Rosie Gallagher. Caps by the Red Roses early this year and bursting through is Hannah Casey. Offloads the ball to Lottie Clapp, the captain. And here's the cook, Hooker Campbell once more. Gallagher to Harrison, ball just in front of her. That one's been knocked on and the Harlequins players can breathe a little sigh of relief there. Yeah, they can because uh, Sydney Gregson was stood out wide with no defender opposite her. So if that had gone to hand and they could get it out, they were in trouble there. Uh, what I do like though is you assume that Saracens are going to do a driven line out there and actually they just lift it off the back, they move it wide, they're trying different things. And uh, you can see the ball work on the floor the there push. to make sure. And then you've got options all over the place. Fantastic line from Casey there. And then vision to like lift it up as well to Lottie Clapp. Crouch. Bind. Almost against type this game so Set. far. Saracens playing all the rugby, keeping the ball alive. That's what Harlequins are famous for. Here's Conkle. Riley to Abby Scott. Automatic selection for the Red Roses these days. Leading line out forward in the Six Nation. Here's Cornbra, another one of their big time internationals. And you've got to say, some of these season test match players are going to have to stand up here. But there's another turnover. Knock on first. Sorry, sorry, sorry. A set of scrum, a couple of knock ons there. I think that comes from building pressure as well, the little knock-ons in the contact point, because they're looking desperately 
Quins look like they're trying to create something, but when you're trying to play out your 22, trying to keep those offloads, they're quite high risk, because if they do go wrong, obviously Saracens get the possession back again. So they almost need to calm it down. Use your players like Conkle, crash them up, get yourself time to then be able to play when you're more settled. Point. Rain comes down at Franklin's Gardens. It was forecast. It's a windy old afternoon here in the East Midlands. Saracens playing all the rugby. And a case he just can't quite, quite hold on to that one, but it's still alive for Saracens. Right. McKenna to Grigson. Sydney Grigson looking for a second. Sydney Grigson with the finish. They might go upstairs here. No try. There was a knock on back in midfield. No try. Yeah, knock on back in midfield. Uh, so all the way back to the knock on, I'm going for Sydney Gregson there because that was a finish. Just she there, had yeah. a lot of work still to do there. Of, uh, and uh, just hands. great strength. Strong so good hands against. from Cattell here. Uh, that's the knock on there that we're seeing. I think Casey's just running so hard onto it when Thank it's gone you. behind her. It comes off her hands forward, it seemed. Here's the, oh, the finish that wasn't. I mean, that's a good handoff and strength. And this is the clever bit. She lifts her feet off the floor because otherwise she's going to slide that into touch. So she knows exactly what she's doing, lifting her feet up, making sure it goes in. All the talk and the build up about Jess Bridge and to some extent Heather Cowell as well on the Harlequins wings. But no one told Sydney Gregson. Yep, she's thinking anything they can do, she can go and do better. Um, it's great that she's just got okay. the ball in hand, she's got confidence. But actually, yeah, I don't Spence think Quinns have uh, managed to get it wide Saracen. just because of the amount of pressure that Saracens are putting on them. Vicky Cornbury just getting a bit of attention here. Perhaps this is a, a good idea, not only for the sake of Vicky Cornbury's ankle, but just to give Harlequins a bit of time to reflect here and try and compose themselves and have a chat yeah. and find a way back into this match. Yeah, because it, it's only 10-0. They, they, they're chasing a game too hard, I think. They don't need to chase as much as they are. They can settle. They're a good team. Uh, so they just need to, yeah, really calm it down and then just do what they do well and not focus on Saracens. So a couple of scrums so far. Alec okay. dominated one of them. This Crouch. was a, a talking point as well before the match. Cornbra up against Bind. Bonsman here again. Set. Georgia Gardner playing her last match of rugby before retirement. Coyle pops it up to a scrum half. Harrison just right in the pocket. Not much on. She's knocked it on. He's Riley. Can Harlequins counter here? Catlin, look at the tackle coming in from Gregson. She's involved in everything at the moment. Savinia Catlin steps through one tackle. Burford. Release three. Clear release, please. Riley again. Here's Cornbra. Gallagher with the tackle. Jade Conkle again. 36 caps for Scotland. Khadija Kamara does well to hold on to that pass, which was slightly behind her. Riley. Dummies at the defence, but it's been read by Poppy Cleal. Saracens have it once more. The hooker Campbell. Oh, penalty. High tackle by number Mickey three. Cornbra. Might be a little bit of trouble here. Chip over the top, free hit for Saracens. Emily Scott fields it, they'll go back for the penalty. Number three high tackle. It's Chloe Edwards, in fact. And that comes from desperation. When you're kind of stuck and you're sprinting up and you're kind of off your balance, you just go for the outreach of the arm and okay. then obviously it's high. Post. Okay, corner. <laughs> to see if she gets the accuracy that she got in the first one. She'll be pretty happy with that. I think the forwards know they can go from that kind of 10 metres out. They know they can do that. So they'll be happy walking towards that and out. We've already seen it, haven't we? What Saracens can do in this position. Campbell throws the line out 
It's gone over the top, but it's been well taken down by Sonic Green, the veteran in this Saracens four pack. 17 years she's been at the club as Green. Reacting well there at the lineout. Advantage, penalty. Advantage coming Saracens way. Clear. Obstinately stands in the tackle and offloads to Hannah Bottoman again. Tackle! Help comes in in the form of Chloe Edwards. You've still got the penalty advantage. Still advantage to Saracens here. Harrison. Harrison dummies and she's through. Zoe Harrison has Saracens third. And the champions are well and truly playing like it. They have threats from everywhere here. And they're just really taking their opportunities. I think Quinns were prepared for them to have the uh, big forward runners running into them. So they've possibly tightened up a little bit too much. So now there's actually room out wide for the people like Sydney Gregson. And that's, that high tackle there leading to the first penalty. And then they're just reactions here. Dummy straight through. Because they're worried about Sydney Gregson probably on the wing. They drift off. And then she's just good spot there going in. Looked easy, didn't it, for her? <laughs> Yeah, a bit of a mismatch on the outside. Of the forward there, Zoe Harrison, all smiles. And she'll attempt the conversion as well. Hasn't been successful so far off the tee. It's a difficult crosswind here. She tries to fade it back. Went in the right direction, but under the post again. So it remains at 15 points to nil. i ask the question, Cat. What are Karen Findlay and Gary Street thinking right now? The head coaches of Harlequins down 15 points to nil. A quarter of the way into this final. I think at half time they'll just really have to change something up to keep them guessing. But at the minute it is just it's really simple. It's looking after the ball. It's just keeping hold of it. When Saracens offload, they're offloading to somebody at pace. When Quinns offload, they're offloading to the opposition. And so they've just got to sort those little things out there. Speaking of Gary Street, he's now talking to Alex Payne sideline. Well, they've come back before. Last year's final, they well and truly came back. Harlequins didn't get there in the end, but they've shown against Saracens they can be under pressure and find a way back. But Gary Street saying he pretty much has to change everything in this performance if they are going to find that way back. Kate. Yeah, and I think it's a mentality thing. Oh, and I, I like how Gary Street, how he just goes, if we could win a line out, that would be great. Um, which uh, that will really help them, obviously, with their, with their possession. I think they're giving Saracens too much respect. They're sitting off them. I think they know they're a good team, but actually they just got to believe in themselves yep. a little bit more. And I, I mentioned it earlier, just focus on what like they do rather than trying to react to what Saracens are doing. And then I think that they'll just settle themselves and they'll grow and they'll build because at the minute we haven't seen any of Quinn's threats and we know they have plenty of them. Well, here's a chance. Find. A scrum in Saracens' Six. half. Leanne Riley to feed it. She's got young... Ellie Green, that first receiver. Here is Green. Out the back to Burford. Burford holds on, shooting out of the line was Lottie Clatt. That seems to be a real tactic of Saracens so far. Trying to interrupt this back line of Harlequins and coming up with the error. That time was Deb McCormack. You've got the scrum. And that will no doubt give Gary Street more angst. They get the attacking opportunity, they get a bit of field possession, bit of, bit of territory, and they 
come up uh, with the unforced And I think, like Cap, as you said, was clever there because what she's done is she knows that there's threats out there. She knows how good Rachel Burford's hands are. So she, if she flies off, she cuts That's off really the opportunity to pass. Um, so forcing them to come in and then play their tighter game, whereas obviously they, Quinns are much more comfortable with, those, with the ball out wide in those wider channels. Laura Newman just getting some attention here. Nicknamed Lollipop. Not quite sure why. No, I'd only have to guess because she's long and lean, <laughs> let's say, rather than skinny. <laughs> yeah. She's shown yeah. what she can do in the line-out so far in this game. Sometimes a second rower. The only change in this Saracen like side today. She's had a, an excellent opening, 20-odd minutes. Saw Sarah McKenna just go down a little earlier as well and get some attention. To one of her ankles. Crouch! Oh, so 23 minutes in, Saracens leading Set. Harlequins 15-0 in the Tyrrells final. There's Bryony Cleal. Sarah Hunter there as well, the Red Roses captain in the back row. This is the big finale to the Tyrrells Premier 15 season. Here is Sarah McKenna. Flat. Nice flat pass to the captain Lottie Clapp. She offloads back to the fullback McKenna. Nominated for the... England Women's Player of the Year award and bursting onto this one is Rosie Gallagher. What a start she's had to this game as well. Harrison again to bottom it. Harlequins look for the turnover. Can't quite get it. Harrison again to Cattell. Another strong run from May Campbell. Gulliver to a loose head prop. L. Perry steps through one tackle. Gulliver's getting an armchair right at the moment. Backwards, play on! At the back of this Saracens forward pack. Backwards again, play on! All the breaks are going Sarri's way right now. Every time they drop the ball, it goes backwards. Cleal's there to pick it up again. Another rumbanctious carry from the big okay, number good. eight. Good timing. Campbell again. Gallagher. Slightly high tackle coming in from Riley. Gets bounced off. Inside ball to Cleal. Harrison. Lauren Cattell. No hands Burford now, Harley Quinn. Brings her to the ground. And Saracens get the decision. And again, another frustration there for Quinns because they're desperately trying to defend, but just giving them the, that penalty, which I assume they're only going to uh, kick into touch here. But that shows the experience of uh, George Gulliver there. She looks uh, yeah. straight to the referee uh, when they're on the floor there. Right. She's looking up, pointing. She's not shouting aggressively. She's just making him aware. And, um, and then they can go from there to get that penalty. Yeah, Georgie Gulliver announced the retirement. You're going for corner. This week. Married to Ben Gulliver, who's played down at Plymouth in the, the Bedford Blues. She works full-time in the NHS. She'll be concentrating on that after this match. This is Rachel Burford. Just copped a knock at that breakdown before. They can ill afford to lose the... Yeah, Burford's going to be instrumental captain. today for Quinns. Um, they were talking earlier uh, in the build-up to the game about just just how key she is just in terms of her leadership uh, also her skill her ability to just those flat passes that we know she can put in front of those wings okay. to give them time and space on the ball so they're going to definitely Boxing, need her please. obviously a whack on the jaw I think Corner. Okay. World Cup winner for no clear release. alongside you Cat in 2014 she's played in four 15s World Cups as you saw on the graphic three sevens World Cups as well Nine. yeah them, please, Here's the new please. girl on the block. Come across. across. Zoe Harrison. Thank you. She yeah. sent another kick deep into Quinn's territory. And there's only one thing coming here. Newman wins it again at the front. Oh. Cleal already oh, yeah. has it under control. So. Saracens. One, sir. Get their drive underway. Look at Abby Scott working furiously trying to interrupt this. Drive again, Bottoman has it under control now for Saracens. Hannah Bottoman, almost there. Last ditch defence from Harlequins. Bottoman, she's the go-to in this part of the field. Pick and go once more. Sarri's looking for their fourth. 
They're over again. And it's Poppy Cleal once more who has her second try. You just can't stop Big Poppy that close to the line. Saracens are running away with the Tyrrells final. Yeah, if there's one person that you don't want to get the ball uh, five metres out, uh, if you're a Quinns, it's Poppy Cleal. She's just so difficult to tackle. Even when she's upright, she just manages to kind of hold her body positioning and just really work her way over that line. Because Quinns actually defend the line out really well at first and they even start to push them back. But then Saracens don't panic. They get organized. You can see George uh, Gulliver in here. I think she ends up actually having a tiny little scrap as well uh, after it. But then, yeah, good carries, good support. And they never go on their own. They'll push each other over as well. Harrison. Sweet contact with that one again, though. It just dips under the crossbar. So try as she might. She can't have the extra two, but no bother for Saracens. Four tries to the good. 20 points to nil. Poppy Cleal has two of them. Here she goes again. And look, she's just fighting over. She's like twisting, turning her body, even when she's got three people trying to tackle her. And uh, it's just that no regard for her body to like make sure she gets over that line to score for her team. Twin sister Bryony, we saw a shot of her in the crowd before. She's got the moon boot on at the moment. Hoping to be back for that. Super Series trip for the Red Roses. They're going to San Diego to play against the other five top women's rugby nations in the world. Leanne Riley, she'll no doubt be there as well. As should Vicky Cornbrook. Good carry from the England loose head prop. Chloe Edwards. Can Harlequins find a score before half time? something anything to give them confidence in this final counter's good lost now burford cuts out kamara across to scott emily scott nice in and away on jody retty riley has quick ball for green short pass to That's edwards a release. green again shooting out of the line again it was Lauren Cattell that time, and just stopping Abby Scott in the track. There's Cornbrook again doing everything she can to lift Harlequins here. Please don't shuffle me. Abby too. Scott that time. Here's Burford, but the pass goes in front of her. Conkle picks it up, gets the hand off going. Jade Conkle, two tries in the semi-final. Riley shows and goes. Advantage high. High tackle from Gulliver. Advantage Harlequins. They get the penalty. Riley wants to go quickly. Referee just wants a little chat with Sydney Gregson. Much better intensity from Harlequins. You can just see actually from the likes of Cornbra carrying hard, just helping them make that ground so then they can have a quick ball, good hands from Berth. Emily Austin. Scott, great little player, Scott. lovely footwork, really nicely Scott. balanced, takes it wide. And this is a great carry from Conkle. Two players trying desperately to tackle her, and she is just making ground. And then Riley thinks she's uh, going for the Zoe Harrison style show and go, and uh, George's other ideas. Nine. Interestingly, the Harlequins have taken the scrum here as a short. It was a straight arm penalty. They could have kicked to the sideline. They've had problems with their lineouts though so far, so they Sit. they go to the. Their powerful set piece at scrum time. Conkle. Get out. Has it at the back. Gulliver trying to come around the side. It's a good contest there. Breaks oh. up a little, balls out the back. Backwards. Riley. Backwards again. Picks it up in the end. Green almost submits in the tackle there and waits for a big forwards to give her some protection. So they had the dominance at the scrum, Harlequins, but. Just couldn't quite keep square. Thank you. Riley to Burford. Decides to hold on. There's Newman with another tackle. Advantage. Newman. Another good intervention for her. Another penalty there to Harlequins. And they go quickly with the quick tap. Here's Riley. 
Hands off her opposite number, Gulliver. Edwards That's again. The Harlequins. Harlequins have the advantage. A purple patch. Burford in midfield. Number six. OK, they'll go back for the penalty. And Saracens could be going number down six. to 14 players here. Called out number six, that's Jody Retty. Yellow card, not 10 metres of the penalty. And she will go to the okay. sideline. I agree with that penalty completely. She, um, Retty knew what she was doing. She slowed their ball down and uh, she isn't letting them attack. So actually, it might look harsh, but actually I completely agree with it. Uh, and now Quinns get to take advantage of the fact they've got 14. Option, please. Again, scrum. I'd go for scrum if I was them, uh, which they've done, because uh, like we've highlighted before, they are losing the lineouts. Now also Saracens are down a player, so they're um, competing against one, uh, really one less player in this no round. Let's keep it up. Yeah, a couple of good touches from Chloe Edwards there as well, wasn't it? In tandem with Liam Riley, just trying to get some initiative here, trying to get some urgency in this Harlequins performance. Yeah, and trying to catch Saracens off guard Crouch. because when you rattle Saracens, Bind. they will give penalties away. Set. Harlequin scrum inside the Saracens 22. Jess Breach is just lurking to the side of this scrum, but Conkle. Picks it up off the base. She's flung to the floor by Newman. Riley goes the opposite way to Emily Scott. Hannah Bottoman with the tackle. Cornbra comes up with the error under the attentions of Poppy Cleal. Timing. Handing back possession to Saracens and Zoe Harrison. Kicks it deep. Advantage over. Jess Breach back to a fly half. Ellie Green. She's got Cowell with her, but look at the tackle from Hannah Casey. What a chase from the Saracen centre. Not now, 14. Harlequins with a one-player advantage after the, the Retty Sinbin looking for their first points in this final. Burford, every time she's looked out wide, there's been a, a player in that passing lane. Green has Cowell with her. Ellie Green, the young 18-year-old, played in this fixture last year, age just 17. Ball's out and back with play on. Ball was lifted. Play, play on. on, says the referee. Okay, Riley wanted good, the please. penalty, good didn't timing, get it. His bottom and hands off McCormack. Burford with the tackle, Gulliver to Harrison. Cattell. No, she didn't. Abby Scott reacts for no Quinns. Ruck already formed. Burford runs straight to opposite number, oh, Lauren Cattell. Oh, Big collision. Let her run, please. Penalty Quinns and Riley goes quickly again through Gulliver once more. Pops the ball off the floor to Cornbra. There's another offload to Jess Breach, but she can't hold on to it either. McKenna looks to counter-attack. Sarah McKenna tries to chip over the top of Burford. And there's a Barney going back in, in back play Stand on up, the please. floor. Time off. Poppy Cleal involved. OK. Jess Breach as well. A couple of England teammates having a stoush. Just take him away, please. Wouldn't be a grand final without a dust-up, would it? Yeah, I think it shows how much it means to them, and I think there's just a lot of frustrations building up there. I actually didn't spot what happened. I was watching the play <laughs> with the chip and chase and charge down. I just want to see if anything happened over here to cause a scuffle, please. OK, stand by. Thanks. The TMO today, David Rose, is just going to have a look at this incident. We're just having a look for the angles. George, just bear with us. Yeah, fine, thanks. This breach came into the line as the offload from Cornbra. It's heavy contact. Let's see how this unfolded. So Poppy Gills just dived on her on the floor where it looks. It doesn't look like there was anything before it. A little flick from Jess Breach on the floor with the foot there. Is that what Poppy Clear was reacting to? Yeah, just looking to see what what we can see on the floor there. So not much from this one that we can see what's going on into it. Oh, is there a trip? 
just looking to see if Breach kicks out with her feet. Yeah, there's a little kick out there, isn't there, to pop Thanks in, and she dives onto her. George, yeah. what looks like happens is that the Queen's player uh, kicks out first, yeah. and then that causes a reaction from the uh, Saracens number eight. Okay, fine. Um, I think the reaction's... I think the reaction's probably due to the kick, no? Yeah, the, re the reaction is definitely a response to the first action. Okay, so... But neither in themselves are, are huge things, but it's definitely a reaction to the to the first one, which is probably the, the, the cause of the um, reaction from Saracens. Therefore, it should be a penalty against Quinns. For the kick, for the lash out. Yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you, David. Captain, please. Look, there's been a tackle. Your number 11 has reacted and pushed out. That's not acceptable. The reaction also is not acceptable. It's going to be a penalty against you because you caused it. Listen, that doesn't happen. We need to control the players, OK? Penalty against you. Yeah, of course. Calm them down, please. I think that's good refereeing as well. He's made that really clear that, yes, it's not OK what Jess Breach did. It also isn't OK how Poppy Cleo reacted. However, the instigator is the one that's going to be the penalty against. And it shows how important TMOs uh, actually are. Because if you look at this initially without that first bit, you just think Poppy's lost her head. But actually, she has been kicked out on and she's just reacted. Tell you what, brave of Jess Breach to provoke Poppy Clear like that. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd pick on Poppy Clear, but yeah, Jess Breach is a braver woman than I am. It wasn't that long ago that those two were on a podium at Twickenham celebrating the Red Roses Grand Slam. That almost doesn't find touch. Breach can't quite reel it in. Zari Harrison eating up more meters here at Franklin's Gardens. Yeah, Zoe Harrison's kicking to touch has been uh, fantastic today. Really accurate, pinpoint, getting her distance. So inside the final five minutes of this first half of the Tyrrells final, Saracens four tries to the good, leading Harlequins by 20 Go points to nil. It's been dropped by Gallagher, but gone backwards, says the referee. The Quins are onto it. Here's Edwards. She certainly lifted her game in the last five or ten minutes of this final, as has Jade Conkle. Catlin. Abby Scott now. Counter right from Bottoman. Turns it over for Saracens. And that just sums up how this first half has gone. Every opportunity that Harlequins have had, Saracens have bettered them. Gulliver to Cleal. Two tries already in this final. Switcher play from Gulliver to the short side. Here's Cleal again. Again, we've seen that second pass go, for the Harley second Queens, carry to bottom. And the tactic which has worked well for Saracens so far. Campbell the hooker. How's that for skill? Cut out pass to Gallagher. The second rower, there's the offload to Newman. Lauren Newman. Brought down by Emily Scott. Switcher play again to Gregson. Campbell. Another pass to Gallagher. Gregson again. Looking for her second try of the match. Gulliver. Perry. Cattell spots a gap, goes for it, offloads to Newman. Abby Scott with the tackle. Sarri's looking for their fifth. Here's Cleal. Tackle. No Harlequins. Newman plays scrum half. Bottoman. Such a handful close to the line. Ten tries this season for Hannah Bottoman already. Cattell holds on. There's the offload to Harrison. Clap, Lottie, clap. Has she got there? Emily Scott. With the tackle. I haven't seen a grounding either, so check for both. We're going to go upstairs and see if the Sarri oh, skipper fine, has their fifth. Yes, George. Try us or no. We've got a foot in touch. We're not sure about grounding. OK, stand by. Thanks. 
actually first got the ball, I thought it was a definite, it was going to be a try, but Heather yeah. Cowell comes across here, hits her, they're driving her across. That's a foot in touch, isn't it, before the ball gets uh, over that line. I hate to say it, but under current regulations, there's a bit of contact with the head here from Emily Scott as she goes down. Yeah, it does look like that, doesn't it? Shoulder to the face. Heather Cowell here, the first defender. Scott and Cowell are almost fighting to get to her, but actually, yeah, that does look hearty around the neck. She is falling into that lot of So in that case, that would be penalty try. If it is, if she's, you know, done a foul in the act of scoring, uh, then that, I, I would assume, would be penalty try. Well, first things first, she looks in touch, doesn't she? The knee looks like it's over the sideline. Yeah, she's definitely gone into touch. It just depends what they think of her as tackle. Yeah, so definite touch uh, in there first. So I assume the replays are looking mainly at the tackle then. George, yeah. it's definitely touch first, touch so, first. It's, so it's no try. Okay, thanks. Thanks. No try. Take the line out, please. Use the line, Harlequins. Saracens. Harlequins so will breathe a sigh of relief there, because they could ill afford to have conceded again just before half time. And they win the line out. Close to their line. Here's Conkle. Two minutes to go in this first half. Cornbra has really stepped up in the latter stages of this first half, and hasn't she needed to? Remember, Saracens with a player in the sin bin, playing with 14 at the moment. McKenna, stand out in the Six Nations. To Cattell, Gregson, Harrison, Breach. Brings Harrison to ground. Oh, now 15. Thank you. Emily Scott just getting on the wrong side of that ruck. How about that from skill from Bottoman? One-handed take on the shoulder. What can't she do? Campbell the hooker to Cleal. Cleal's through. Takes a tight head prop. Edwards to bring her down. Harrison again. It's on for Sarri's on the far side. McKenna. Clap. Scored a stunner in the final last year. Harrison shows and goes. Harrison has her second. And the champions have five inside 40 minutes. You cannot fault the work rate of these Saracens players. Players like Gallagher, how good has she been? She has been everywhere, passing those balls out. You've got the big players, you've got Bottoman, you've got Cleal. And then when you've got the likes of the wings that can stretch as much as these players can, uh, you can then, that's when it's easy here for Zoe to throw that uh, little dummy and then uh, go through. Very unusual for someone to get away with it twice with a dummy. Normally you get away with one and then you get absolutely ended the second time you try it. But a uh, good vision and a good finish from Zoe Harrison there. You're fine now, yeah. Well, one of the matchups we looked at before this game was Harrison against Green, but there's been only one player in it so far. And that's the lady in picture. Owen Farrell-esque, a la Saracen style, lean and the contact. And the extra two for Zoe Harrison, as if to punctuate this first half performance from Saracens. They have been absolutely dominant for the opening 40 minutes, and they lead Harlequins in the Tyrrells final by 27 points to nil. Teams are out, but we haven't got a referee at the moment. So a little pause in proceedings here. Cat Merchant alongside it. Sarah there, Cat, talking about how surprised she was about how that first half unfolded. I mean, it was a complete masterclass from Saracens, wasn't it? But what could have, what could Gary Street and Karen Findlay have said to his, to their Harlequins team at half time? Well, I don't think Gary Street will be screaming at them. I think he'll be quite calm and actually talking about what they can do right to on, change. Great start with that. So Rachel Burford. Catches the restart, just what Harlequins wanted, trying to get some initiative in this second half. Five tries down at the break, 27-0.
in the final. Don't shout at me every breakdown. Yeah, rather well, just get a little word from the referee George Selwood there to keep it. Fantastic kickoff right. to start, wasn't it? Exactly on that 10 metre line, uh, which are the ones you just, they're the dream, the ones you want to chase and so you can get back hold of. Crouch! Bind! Looks like Set! Change for Harlequins on the right wing side. Bethany Wilcock has come on for. Heather Cow. Now Heather Cow's actually gone a fullback, and Emily Scott is the player. No hands, Harlequins. Thank you. Replaced. Here's Poppy Cleal. Who's available? Just check that, David, please. Here's Bottom. Tackle release now. Big first half from the Thank Saracens tight head prop. Hop, 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 hop. Georgie Gulliver to Zoe Harrison. Two tries and bursting through the line is Lottie Cat. Offloads to Lauren Cattell. Rachel Burford, right place, right time. Chip through. Charge down from Jess Breach. And here come Harlequins. Vicky Cornborough. Emily Scott's actually gone into fly half here, so correction there. She's the stayed on. Looks like the young Ellie Green's the player replaced. <laughs> Penalty Harlequins. Three high tackle. Hang on. That's okay. Hang on one sec. You okay? What a great little move in here, that dummy switch with the blindside winger coming through, great burst from Lottie Clapp, and then Cattell sights, she thinks she's got a support player, actually gives it to Burford, who then, uh, who then turns around and they play that play back, but it's a great little move there to get them in behind. And then, yeah, that's a high shot in there from Bottoman. And then, actually, I think more needs to come from that. I think that could even be looked at to be a yellow because she puts the high hit on, then she lies on the ball and doesn't let it come out. So I think possibly there we could look at um, a card. So we're back to the full complement. Jody Retty. Back onto the field, there's Marley Packer carrying the water. Just on the left of shot there, there she is. Okay. With the instructions. She'd be hugely disappointed to have missed this run at the end of the season, but offering every little bit of advice she can Bob to her Rachel. teammates in this final. Player Points. of the final, sure. this time last year. Yeah, Marley Packer will be wild, she'll be beside herself. She's always so energetic on match day, I think, whether she's playing or not. So she'll be bouncing off the walls, wanting to be, uh, wanting to be involved. Characters of rugby. So Emily Scott's moved into fly half. She'll she's well accustomed to playing that position and she'll assume a goal kicking responsibility as well. And a chance here for Harlequins to pick up their first points of the final, 43 minutes in. She's a really calm fly half as well. She can just like make everyone around her kind of feel composed as well and actually a little bit possibly more experienced than obviously 18. Franklin's Gardens falls to a hush. Emily Scott kicks it straight and true. And Quinns are on the board. It's taken almost 44 minutes. But the South West Londoners have their first three points of the match and an opportunity for their support here to break into a smile. I think sometimes just points are points and actually it can do a lot to lift you. So actually going for points there I think was quite clever to actually just lift the spirit of this side, get them back into this game and get them going again. 
Sorry, Harrison gets us back underway. That was going out on the full, I think, but it was flicked back inside by Cornbra and a mistake from Jade Conkle. Just not like her to make mistakes like that either. So just the pressure of the occasion. I mean, like Conkle's normally someone with just such solid hands, like um, you'd back her at any time. So just a mistake creeping in there. Vicky Cornbra here. She is on the sideline. Oh, if she'd have left that. Crouch. Possibly Bind. could have left that. Cornbra's had a good game today, though. I think she's really carried well. Perhaps could have done with a shout from a teammate. Advantage. Advantage Saracens, Cleal picks it up off the base, Poppy Cleal. Ball inside the Gallagher, but that's gone forward. They'll go back for the penalty. Three angle. So this will not be what they'll be wanting from Quinn's either now. The scrum as well, kind of having problems into that. Good reactions from Poppy Cleal picking up, running. Would have been a nice little link in there with uh, George Gallagher if she could have got it away to her. Zoe Harrison electing to kick the post here. Mali Pack is bringing on the tee. He thought at 27 3 she might have gone to the sideline again, but perhaps just to take away that penalty from Harlequins and say, no, we're going to be ruthless here. So much about rugby's momentum. And I think, yeah, it's exactly what you're saying there. They want to take away, they want to nullify the fact that uh, Quinns did have a penalty. They want to get themselves back on the score sheet last just to get into Quinns' head that little bit more to be like, actually, we are ahead, we are comfortable and we're going to keep scoring. Zoe Harrison takes Saracens to 30. She has been brilliant in this final. There's no other word for it, really. Played at 12 for most of the Six Nations. That raised a few eyebrows with the likes of this woman in defence, Rachel Burford, no, having oh, to no. come off the bench. But Thanks. Zoe Harrison really has shown her class so far in this final. Gulliver, back to Harrison. There's one in front hold. Just wait there. Thank you. Kicks deep to Jade Conkle. She'll want to make up for that error before his Heather Cow. Former elite gymnast finds the offload as well. Inside ball from Scott. Harlequins trying to get something going here. Conkel again. Riley gets quick ball to Scott. Burford steps inside a couple of Saracens defenders. Tackle. Emily Scott again to Abby Scott. She offloads off the floor to Khadija Camera. The French woman has had little opportunity in possession so far in this final. Scott shows and goes, and there's the offload, but Tavinia Catlin can't quite hold on to it. But Emily Scott almost opening the door. Yeah, I think Emily Scott just has that kind of air about her where she can just create something out of nothing. That didn't look like much, but she does really well. So when she gets the ball, really pushes forward, punches her arms through, and it's just a shame Catelyn can't keep hold of that one because actually then she would have been in and behind that defence then. I think the pass might have been intended. And Bethany Wilcock. Crouch. Bind. Set. But a positive sign for Harlequins. Long way to go in this final. Toe Vixton has come off the bench the turnover. for Deb McCormack. Doing good work at the breakdown there. And quick reactions from Leanne Riley there off the back of that scrum. You know how much of a threat Poppy Cleal is. So actually you've got to be on her as soon as she gets those ha her hands on, those ball, on the ball. Emily Scott kicks to the sideline. So that's a good spot, well timed, straight low chop tackle. And then McCormack straight over. Well, that's the way to get Poppy Cleal before she can get going. Tavinia Catlin 
Throws to the front of the lineup, but it's been read by Lauren Newman. Robbing off Abby Scott. So just when Harlequins get some field position, they turn it over at the line out once more. Brilliantly read by Newman. Gulliver. And a Casey, the first receiver there, the centre, helping out the big forward. Harrison, that's been charged down. Opportunity for Harlequins, and it just bounces over the end line. And that was outside the end goal, yeah. When it ain't going 22. your way. 22. Wow, that could have that could have been interesting there. And I think the work rate to get to that and the commitment to do it uh, when you're 27 points down, I think just shows uh, how much it means to this Quinns team. And it's, they're playing You've for pride now and they there. really want to get themselves back into it. Well, how about that? Let's play, please. Territory graphic no, almost goes please. against what you think it would be, the, how dominant sure Saracens right. have been in this game. A lot of the action taking part in the middle part of the field. I think it just shows as well that Saracens, were, when they've had their possessions, they've utilised it. So Quinns have had the ball, they just haven't been successful with what they've been doing. Just 5% of the game played in Saracens, 22. Here's a good run from Bethany Wilcock. Playing just a fourth game for the senior side, the young 18-year-old. Advantage. Offside, let her run, please. Riley taps and goes quickly again, the England scrum half. Just what Quinns need, a bit of go forward. Cornbra picks and goes, runs into Poppy Cleal. Conkle. Campbell goes in for the turnover, doesn't win it. Here's Cornbra again. This is better from Harlequins. Getting closer to the Saracens line. Pick and go once more. It's Conkle again. She had 30 carries last week. Here's Catlin, the hooker. <laughs> Penalty Saracens. Hannah Bosserman pumps the chest. That's heartbreak there for Quinns. They've done, they've done so well keeping the ball for as many phases as they did. Starting off from a lovely break from Wilcock. She actually managed to bounce Lottie Clapp. Lottie Clapp's a fantastic defender, so to be able to do that, she's got to be really strong. But then uh, targeting that breakdown bottom and getting in there gets the penalty and the turnover. She used to be a centre, you know, Hannah Bottom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Harlequins, that will really take the wind out of their sails. That's the right hand Should of Bosman, gap, right there, on her feet. Turnover one. Nine. Line out doesn't work out for Saracens. Riley's onto it. Ball drifts in the breeze here. Wilcock picks it up. Quinns have another opportunity. Here's Scott. Cut out ball to Cow. Brought down by Lottie Clappen into touch as well. Heather Cow, 20 tries this season, no room to move there. I think this is the difference between the two sides as well. The line-out doesn't Harlequins go well two, for please. Saracens. Quinns react really quickly to it, but Sammy's work really hard to be able to get it okay, back. We put the tackle into it. touch and then obviously they can swap, uh, get the possession back again. So good reactions there getting the ball out wide but a great tackle by Lottie Clapp there into touch what's important is she slides down to twist the feet out so she does well there good strength there's toe picks in the Sweden captain is coming on the second half El Perry Sarah Hunter mentioned her first half performance as well the loose head prop is 21 years of age made a debut back in November she's had a big final as well yeah, another line-breaking prop. They just, <laughs> they love it now. But it, uh, it's not just the line breaks, though. It's the ability to get the offloads away. And uh, as we were talking about earlier, that tip on, that extra okay. pass. So you think you're Only tackling the, the right danger piece. runner with the ball, and then on. they move that shift. They shift the point of contact, and that's what makes them so difficult with this side. It's 
So Campbell throws the line out. That's been overthrown as well. Riley scoops it up into the hands of Emily Scott. Cut out ball to Kamara. Sarah McKenna. Good tackle on her. Rachel Burford picks and goes. Tackle! Release Saracens! And Rettia trying to hold her up. Here's Cornbra again. She's been tireless in this match. The loose head prop. Conkle. Sarri's going for the turnover. The players shoved out of the way. Chloe Edwards. Cornbra again. Bottoman. No hands three. Told to let go. Conkle. Into Cleal, or opposite number. Riley, short pass to Vixton, the Sweden captain. She's running to the referee, so we'll have to go back for the scrum. Yeah, George Selwood just holds his hands up, says sorry. Ladies. Oh, a hard luck as well to go straight into the ref. I think possibly he could have let that play slightly, um, just to see how it played on, because he bounce, she bounces off, and then actually, could she have got down? But um, they'll get the scrum and hopefully okay, for them ready? they'll get something off it. A bit of a shame, wasn't it? I don't know this theme up, but still on for Harlequins. Bind. That's the reverse angle you're looking at. Set. Stay square. Harlequins. Power comes on at the scrum. Conkle Bind. has it at the back. They had the advantage as well. Still inching towards the Saracens line, looking for their first try in the final. Jade Conkle picks up the ball, heads to the try line. Can't quite get there. Cornbra now. Harlequins have a try. Finally. Quins are over. It's taken 55 minutes, but they have their first score. And that's a great scrummage from them there. And they knew exactly the timings uh, of what they wanted to do. And Conkle's holding it at the back there, controlling it well. Yeah. Time. Hold the conversion, please. Rachel Burford and Emily Scott want to hurry up and take the conversion here. And they know why, because George Selwood's going upstairs. He's just coming to slow it down, so I think we're checking grounding. Of course, you've got the advantage anyway. That's clever by Rachel Burford no. there. <laughs> That'll be unfair, wouldn't it? So they're checking the grounding. It's Vicky Cornbra who scoops it up. Not going to see a ground in here from that angle. Too many legs and bodies in the way. So the pick up there, drive, Conkle's short, short on that one there, and then it's just... Just bear with me, George, a yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. How they can get in there. Okay. So Conkle's first initial pick's definitely short, and then we're looking at Cornbra. Can she manage to, to ground it down? Well, this will be heartbreak for Harlequins if this is ruled out. They've worked so hard to get a try in this final. Here's Cornbra coming in. So she's definitely over the line. It's just whether she gets hit back. Well, the original decision on the field was a try. Yeah, so do you stick with that? Because that's what you've seen and you think, and there's nothing to confirm otherwise. So, George, yeah. I was checking to see if there was a knock-on in the build-up. I can't see a knock-on from those images. You've then obviously seen the ball grounded. Seen grounded yeah. yeah. So stick with your on-field issues, and that's fine. Okay, try up. Yeah. Thank you. Fine, I can't. Try stands, Vicky Cornbro. And that's great um, communication between the ref and the TMO there. He's TMO's looked for the um, the knock-on, said there hasn't been one. Ref has clearly stated he had seen the grounding, um, so then they can uh, play on. And I think they deserve that try as well. They've been building the pressures up in Mountain, so very pleased for Quinns there. It's a breezy afternoon. Rachel Burford just holding the ball on the tee here for Emily Scott, taking her time. Yeah. She's made good contact. The Quinns fans will tell you that's gone straight through. So Harlequins into double figures.
30 points to 10, 34 minutes to go. Never say never. Yeah, we've seen, you know, they've been on the receiving end of a, of a heartbreaking comeback. Um, you know, so hopefully they can do it for their point of view to be back into this game. Back underway in the final. A 20-point advantage for Saracens. 56 minutes gone. Leah Lyons, the Ireland international, off the bench for Harlequins. She was injured in the Six Nations, hasn't played since then. And a bottom and looks loaded. in a bit of trouble and back play. The Sarri's tight head, getting some attention from the trainer, just out of shot. Here's Emily Scott. He seems to have really changed the dynamic of this game since moving to fly half. Burford. Cut out ball to Jess Bridge. Her first real opportunity inside to Kamara. It's on for Harlequins and Riley coughs it up. Yep. Oh, what an exciting bit of play there. We see the first time Breach gets the ball in her okay, hands, so gets a great it. offload away. Really think they're starting to make ground and then it just goes into a knock-on. It kind of sums up their day, I think. But moments of brilliance, but then just not quite being clinical enough to finish it off. Jess Breach just giving us a glimpse of what she's capable of, a world-class ability. Yeah, the lovely pass from Berth to get it to her, and then great hands back inside, and I think uh, Liam Riley just takes her eyes off it just slightly and uh, drops, drops it there. It's a lovely miss pass. Good handoff to get in to Kamara. Offload. Well, Kat, here's a moment. Georgie Glover, uh, Georgie Gallagher, rather, an, an old teammate of yours, coming off a rugby field for the, the very last time, announced their retirement. Oh, look how much it means to her. Like, she's such a little legend. She really is a little legend. Um, known to her friends as a little rat. <laughs> so uh, she's had a great day and brilliant game. And yeah, Saracens are sorely going to miss her, but nothing other than good words to say about her. Now you can see what a popular figure she Crouch. is. Georgie Gulliver. And if Saracens can close this out, what a fitting Set. tribute it would be to her career. Emma Swords, Swordsy, as she's known, off the bench for Saracens. Swordsy for Ratti. Short pass to Hannah Casey. A chopper, as she's called, is chopped down on her own 10 metre line. May Campbell, the hooker go, first Harley receiver. Queens. She's so comfortable on the ball as all these Saracens front rowers are. Yes! 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 Harlequins have the turnover. Oh, you can hear the cries of yes from Leanne Riley. And it's Leah Lyons who's come off the bench. And that's just the impact that Quinns are looking for. Yeah, Leah Lyons has had a good impact already. A couple of good carries getting in, involved there, making sure she gets uh, that turnover. And just great work getting low here, putting pressure on um, onto that ball. So the referee's thinking, holding on, or it's not coming out. Okay. Leah Lyons, 22 caps for Ireland from Munster. She's a great character. Doesn't mind the, mind the old chip over the top either, which is quite something to see. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> fine in the middle. Don't change eight. Eight, get your foot in. Five's legal, also bound so in. Harlequins That's one. with their version of the catch and drive. But look at Poppy Cleal in the back of that. Quinn's driving more and they've stopped it in its tracks. Cleal all smiles, gets up off the deck. Bit to say too. Yeah, I mean, that was Quinn's first line-up they've won, I think, or, or one of the first to actually get it going. And then that's the thing, it's so difficult to stop a rolling ball, but if you can get in there legally on that other side, then you can just cause absolute chaos. Okay, Alex Osterbury, who must be a pretty happy Saracens head coach, is talking to Alex Payne.
better angles on that last scrum. Let's keep that up. <laughs> yeah, nice smile, Georgie oh, Gulliver. Here she is coming off, Cat. As you said, all emotion. This game means something to her, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. And I think when you've um, put in a long, Correct. hard career and you know that then you're, you know, you're moving Point. on from it, um, that's your last Six. game. And um, it'd be great if they could win it for her. Alex Osterbury, all focused still, isn't he? At 30 to 10, you could perhaps forgive him for relaxing a little bit, but no. He is fully... Taking back in. Hold two and three, just what you hear. Focused on seeing this one out. How's that for a clearance from Zoe Harrison? Just bouncing it over the sideline like a like a lazy little nine iron onto the 16th at the Masters. Well, I think Alex's point as well as the coach was saying, oh, their attack's been okay. 30 points um, to start with unanswered. And um, like I think it's more than okay, we'll give them that. There's a bit of pressure on Alex Osprey taking over from Rob Kane, who now runs up the USA women's program. At the USA women, Eagles team had a cracking game against the Barbarians. None other than Rocky Clark starting in the front row for the Barbarians in Denver earlier today. Sounded like a great game. Yeah, and Rocky Clark actually had more the caps than the entire there. USA team. <laughs> so uh, pretty uh, impressive stat. Barbarians will be at Twickenham for our double header against the Red Roses. That's on the 2nd of June, 12.45. Great to see the Barbarians embracing women's test rugby. Here's Leah Lyons. Riley to Abby Scott. Sonia Green, a couple of war horses there in conflict. Speaking of conflicts, how about Jade Conkle Tackle. against Poppy Cleal? That battle's run and side run side. all afternoon. Let the ball come, please. Quinn's almost their entire team on this the side of the available. field. Just Heather Cowell on the in midfield. They've really stacked this near side. I think they need numbers near the breakdown. They feel they've been out muscled so far and they need they need bodies in traffic. It's been a much better second half from Harlequins. If only they could have started this final with this amount of urgency. Inside ball to Edwards. Sarri's looking a little bit tired now, just slightly slower getting up off the field. Spot tackle on Rachel Burford from Lauren Cattell. There was an article in the Times by Owen Slot today about how Rachel Burford was the, the best passer in world rugby. Well, she, she's hardly been able to pass the ball today because this line speed from Saracens has been so quick, so on it. Cornbra. Bottom and she's shaken off that stinger she had at the shoulder earlier. Here's Toe Vixton. She offloads off the deck. There's another offload. Back to Cornbra. Harlequin getting into the groove. Riley snipes again. She's one of the best in the business at finding space in behind the breakdown. Lions. Emily Scott shows and goes offload to Kamara. Riley thinks about going the short side, decides to go open. Cornbra, she's carried like a war horse all afternoon. Lions, she's really added something, the Munster woman. It's on for Quinns on the far side, Jess Breach. Cattell with the tackle. Let go, Sarah, McKenna, let go. told to let go. No, no, no. Get out. OK, advantage. Offside. Harlequins have the advantage. Here's Edwards. Riley asking the referee if there's a decision coming. He's got it. So she wants here, it. No. And she taps and goes so quickly, it quickly. She has to Go do to it on the mark. mark. Number five offside. Taps and goes this time to Lyons. Poppy Cleel with a Western Royal style tackle, puts her on the deck. Here's Abby Scott, Abby Scott, trying to wrestle her way over the line. Harlequins looking for their second score. 
Time. It's Rachel Burford. She Maybe thinks she's got you, one here. I think okay, Rachel try this on and stand by. It's all right, we're just checking. So we, okay. they might not be able Fine. to let her... Um, Berth might not have been able to pass it much this game because they've been flying up so and uh, stopping good. her, but she can pick and go and score a try, it looks like. So look at this body height. Great work. Scoops her hand in, head down low. Great leg drive and just blast through the tackle. I think that's a try. It's got to be a try. Certainly grounded you over the line. Him, yeah, you might want the try. Okay, thank you. Rachel Burford, the captain, stepping up for Harlequins. I love it. Like, if you were thinking of the tries that Rachel Burford might score today, I probably wouldn't have picked it on a pick and go. Um, but fair play to her. It just shows how strong and versatile a player that she is. Game on at Franklin's Gardens. This kick from Emily Scott. To make it a 13 point ball game. She has the extra two. Harlequins coming back in the Tyrrells final. I'll tell you what, Emily Scott has made a real difference to this team. The impact that she's just lifted them, and I feel they're playing with a completely different intensity with her kind of controlling them uh, at fly half. Saracens are walking slowly back to take this restart. Rachel Burford, she's done pretty much everything you can do in the game. She senses that they might be onto something here. 66 minutes gone. Harrison gets us back underway. We've got a game on, folks. Jess Breach fields the deep kick. The Lions really has contributed big time since she's come off the bench. No wonder they were so desperate to get her back fit for this final. Khadija Kamara does well to hold on under the attentions of Lottie Clapp. They look a completely different side now, Harlequins. Abby Scott. She offloads the Lions. There's the passing game to Cornbra. Still full of running to Cornbra. Toad Vixton thunders into the Saracens half. Riley goes the same way. How about the left hand take from Lyons? They've gone over the sideline. Gee, we have seen some skill today, haven't we? The take there from Leah Lyons. How good are Leah Lyons' hands? Just soft, brilliant, perfectly weighted pass as well to get it out wide. Cornbra, head down, oh, yeah. carries, great offload and um, line break here. And then good roll in, gets back up. She's completely entitled to do that. She's not held. And then great to get this ball out. And again, Leah Lyons with another soft pass. Brilliant. I'm not sure she was in touch there, actually. Could lose your camera. It was pretty early. Got the offload away. Anyway, Saracens have the, the line out. Well, Perry. Tackle. Thanks, Quinn's away now. Big first 40 minutes, as did the entire Saracens team. They've had to play a different sort of game in the second half as Harlequins have come back into it. 12 minutes to go. 13 minutes. The Tackle. 13 points Let the, ball the difference. Come here. Don't hold her in. Let the ball come. Well, I could tell. Such a efficient rugby back. player. Oh. Harrison decides to kick in traffic. Wiper style kick. Here's Heather Cow. Heather Cow gets the sidestep. Release 15. Brought down. Clear release, told Clear. to let go. Thought she had rights. Referee thought otherwise. Here's Jade Conkle. Again, Poppy Cleal. Almost on cue. Pops up and stops Conkle in her tracks. Emily Scott inside ball. Emily Scott pulling the strings for Harlequins in the don't second go in there, half. Don't go in there. Riley comes the near side. Scott again. Show and go. Emily Scott 
inside, Cleal gets in the way. It's gone backwards. Poppy Cleal comes up with another big play in the final. He's looking at That was on for Harlequins. What a break from Emily Scott. Thank you. Back to Harrison. Wait, eight, six, wait here, wait here. Thank you. Cow. Heather Cow. 20 tries this season. Scored the opener and their big win in the game changer when they broke the record for a women's club game in England at the stoop. Scott again up to the halfway line. Riley to Burford. Conkle. Approaching the final 10 minutes, Scott stands in the tackle. No one there to pop it up to. But they still have it under control. They go the same way. Here's Scott again. It's bounced out of the hands of Jess Breach. And Saracens have the ball back. Mel Perry works the short side. Emma Swords to Retty. Real as well, McKenna. You can hear her say, I think they're offside. Ref. ref didn't think so. Shoving McKenna back in her own direction. Poppy Cleal. Just buying a little bit of time. Vice captain today. She's had a big performance in the final. More big defence coming in from Quinn's Leah Lyons again. Push back, thank you. Bottoman. Been a while since she's had a carry. Always seems to make yards. Harris is by eight and six. That's thank a you. hurry. That ball's bounced back into the hands of Hannah Casey. Abby Scott just lazily. You're on the wrong side, you've got to get back. Getting herself on the wrong side, so it'll be a penalty to Saracens. I think that bounce of the ball just literally shows today's uh, how it's gone. Uh, the bounce Four goes nine. straight into Sari's hands. Could have been very dangerous if it advanced up into breaches, but uh, yeah, it goes Sari's way again. Here's another look at the kick. Yep. Yeah, had that bounce back <laughs> uh, into breaches two hands. There's a little feet. opportunity there. Gonna wait for the yeah. Changes for Saracens. Nina Vistason, there she is in the 21 shirt. Coming on as well as Sarah Bebbington. Okay, time back on. Anna Casey replaced. And May Campbell, who's had a big game in this final. She timing. Heads to the sideline as well. Abby Scott has snaffled the ball for Harlequins at the lineouts. Eight minutes to go. Can Harlequins take it to the wire? Cornbrook rolls for another couple of yards. Conkle hits and spins. Saris think they have the turnover, and they do. El Perry. Gets the accolades this time. And you can see how much it means to the whole team. And that's one thing Saracens do well. When one person does something, it does lift the whole team. When they get that turnover, you can see what it means. And they're all cheering. But it was Perry that did the, uh, the hard work this time to get that ball. Well, Saracens are synonymous with the Wolf Pack, aren't they? This lot have been like a pack of hungry lions today every yeah. time Quinns have gone anywhere near a breakdown there's been so, a black yeah. shirt there to try and pilfer it back for Saracens but interesting no tries the second half for Saracens so they've not really been having the um the same level of success in the first half but they've gone for the kicks they've gone kind of more sensible plays but that does coincide with Quinns obviously upping their game as well yeah Quinns have been better haven't they much better in the second half
So a long way out for Zoe Harris, and she hits it low. Not the distance, but not quite the direction. Behind. Behind. Now Riley improvises from the 22 restart. It was meant for Heather Cowell, but... Saracens have it. Lauren Cattell. She's been excellent in this final. Swords. Rosie Galligan. Had a fine break in the first half. Harrison inside ball. It's a Lottie Clatt. We saw that in the final last year. Harrison digs it through over the sideline. Oh, that's class from the Saracens fly half deep in this final. We'll that's play the game down there. Thanks very much. Use the line, yeah, that's a lovely nudge through there. Like through the defence, grubbing it through into uh, just five metres out. So excellent putting the pressure back on. Mickey Cornbro, I can't remember how many times I've mentioned her name today. She has put in a huge shift for Harlequins. And then with just five minutes to go, it looks like Saracens could indeed, as we thought, they probably would be at half time at 27 points to nil, heading Thank towards you. their second Thank you. Tyrrell's title. Jay Conkle, tattooed arms with another carry. No six! Cornbra once again puts her hand up. Riley finds Lyons. Cornbra. That's outside. No. Take him back in. Scott. Long pass. It's gone to ground. Lottie Clapp centers an opportunity. Heather Cowell under all sorts of pressure. Riley has it though. Back to Scott. She's trying anything, everything, to try and get Harlequins out of their danger zone. But Hannah Bottoman turns up and gets the counter up going. Laurie Edwards with a double clutch, just holds on. Abby Scott, so no doubt with her at Twickenham. In June for that game against the Barbars, been charged down. Let go, turn. Wilcock. Cleans it up, nice Riley, the Cornbra. Berthe decides the 16. kick, Three. trying Thank to you. find an exit, and it's bounced over the sideline in front of Sarah McKenna. Rachel Five. Burford, a bit of claret late in this final. She's such a hard player. <laughs> I just look at her, she's covered in blood. She's been battered, she's, you know, just had loads of contact today, done loads and loads of work, and she's just there getting on with it, like just such a tough little up. warrior of the game. I think that might be a blood bin, Rachel. <laughs> just possibly. She won't want to come off, though. She'll definitely be going, it's fine. What a career she's had. It is, 84 yeah. caps. World <laughs> class, no doubt about it. World Thank Cup winner. It's about that time, a break in play here, Kat. Who's your Tyrrell's Premier 15's player of the match? Well, I think there's been quite a few contenders for it and the work rate from the Saris pack is, uh, has been outstanding. They've managed to move it out as well. Um, but for, for me, I think it's got to be Poppy Cleal. I think today she's not just the line breaks, uh, but the tackling, the work rate, everything else that she puts in those uh, that just lifts the rest of the team as well she got some important turnovers at key moments and uh, so i think yeah she's been uh, outstanding for saracens today poppy cleal tyrrell's player of the match what a performance
to her try physicality and her stuff. as well. I mean, as you say, everything. Turnovers, defensively. Even when the scrum's been under pressure, she's been so composed at the back, hasn't she? She picks up the ball, buys a bit of time, gets them out of difficult situations. Yeah, and it's definitely not just... The tries are, are great, but it's not just that. It's the other things that she does. And, um, yeah, she really binds this team together in how she plays. Okay, CSC wins the line out for Saracens. In the middle. No, 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 no. And they'll milk this clock all the way if they can. Just three points yeah. in the second half for Saracens. They might have more here. Zoe Harrison bursting through a gap. Advantage. Counter up comes in from Emily Scott, but came through, played the nine. Came through and playing the nine is the call the from the referee. Yep. That was heavy contact. Okay. And again, they'll be pretty frustrated uh, with that one. Yes, time off. Because there's been a few turnovers by um, attacking a breakdown when it Perfect. feels like it's um, when it's there. What a spot here. She's no nicely balanced, isn't she, Zoe Harrison? She just seems to change direction very effortlessly and then uh, drives in to get in Point behind seven. that defence. Time on the ball, exactly doesn't she? She just ball. seems to have that little extra bit of time, whether she's putting players into space or making breaks like that herself or, or clearing a lines with that massive That's boot right. she's got. Good players right. just have that little bit of extra time, don't they? Yeah, it just seems like they have yeah, more time than anybody else that might seem rushed in a decision, whereas uh, calm, composed, just, uh, just able to make decisions clearly and confidently as well. And they're going to kick for posts. They're all professional. I mean that with a small p, the Saracens team. They are going to wind down this clock, confirm this victory, and confirm their second English Premiership title. Zoe Harrison bangs it through. They're up to 33. And they're on their way to the championship. He plays with it, number one and number three. Hannah Bottoman has been replaced, Jeannie. Leola, the Spanish international, there is Bottomman on the sideline. What a game she's had. What a game Poppy Cleel's had. Khadija Camara, no. Good work. Thank you. Sense of respect for her own safety. Brings down the biggest player on the field. Here's Cleel again. Seconds left in the final. Saracens. A masterclass in the first half, setting up this victory. 30. Swords. Cattell. Okay, that's time, thank you. We're in the red. Yep. We're in referee's time. They're all coming in around this breakdown. Okay. Sarah McKenna directing traffic. Swords has it, back to Harrison. Boots it over the sideline. It just about gets there. And Saracens are Tyrrell's Premier 15th champions for 2019. They're the best of the best, and they've gone back to back. They, they deserve that today. They just, that first 30 minutes, they absolutely blitzed it, and they just showed the absolute dominance that they have. And I think today as well they varied their game they weren't just the, uh, the the physical presence that they normally are but they also got it wide some exciting offloads line breaks in there and just credit to them they deserve that oh, you can see what it means to them you think of the players they didn't have available Brani Cleal, Marley Packer, Vicky Fleetwood so much quality there so much depth and talent 
in this Saracens outfit. It's not a bad organisation, is it? You think of what the men are doing, you think of what the netball team's doing, the Mavericks aren't bad either. This Saracens women's team are a class outfit. Just showing their class completely and uh, just showing exactly how much it means to them as well. They're just a team that just doesn't know how to lose. And I think that's the, the key thing in there, that they all just believe they can win, they know they can win, and, uh, and they do it. They are the most successful club in the top tier of English women's rugby. Another title, a second Tyrrell's Premier 15s title. A lot of talk before this final about this could be Harlequin's year. Learned the lessons of the previous year, but as Gary Street said in the first half, they they barely fired a shot, didn't they? And Saracens took full advantage. Well, we saw in the second half what Quinns could do, and had they had turned up with that intensity from the kickoff, it could have been a very different story. But I think they just left it uh, just too late, unfortunately, uh, uh, for them. So a little bit too late, and then um, they came back in the second half, but not not uh, not quite enough to answer it. They're wearing all black, and at times in this match, especially in that first, that they played like all blacks, didn't they? Absolutely. Georgie Gulliver, what a performance from her. Got the got the celebrity send off as well in her first match cap. Exactly, and, and it's exactly what she deserves. And I just think this team were just so switched on, so clinical, and I'm so pleased for George. But seeing that interview with uh, Rachel Burford, it, it's heartbreak because you look at the, you know, the look on her face, and it just shows sport how it can be quite cruel sometimes. But you've got to have the winners, and um, and they they definitely deserved it today. Well, they all are gathering on the podium here at Franklin's Gardens. Dallas White, home kneeling trail finders last year for this fixture. There's Sonic Green, 17 years she's been at Saracens. She's got another winner's medal. Zoe Harrison, center shot, all smiles. What a performance from her. Hannah Bottoman. What a future. Poppy Cleel just taking her place on the podium as they await to receive the Tyrrell's Premier 15s trophy. Lottie Clapp for the second time collects the trophy. Saracens go back to back. They are Tyrrell's Premier 15s champions for the second year running. They are the best women's rugby team in England. And didn't they deserve their victory here in Northampton this afternoon? Absolutely relentless team. Completely relentless. Absolutely deserved. Clinical at times. Exciting. Great brand of rugby that they're playing. Well, thank you, Kat, for all your expert comments this afternoon. It's been great to have you with us as Saracens have confirmed their place at the top of the women's game in the Tyrrell's Premiership. What a performance it's been from the women in black. Let's go back pitch side now where Maggie and Giselle are down there with Alex Payne.